What's up guys, this is Andy here with Ultima I Device Vids, and today I'm going to be showing you guys 100 features found in iOS 10. So these uh, include smaller features and also some of the larger changes and more, you know, redesigned elements of iOS. So get comfortable, you know, get a cold refreshing beverage because this might take a little bit of time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So let's go ahead and start off with a very simple one. In Safari, you could go ahead and tap and hold on the window button inside of here to close all tabs just like this. And then boom, everything's closed. And also, uh, you could also tap and hold on the done button in here. And you also have the option to close however many tabs you had open. There's a lot of emoji improvements. For example, if I type in a certain emotion like I am, let's just say sad. As you can see there, it's going to suggest right in the predictive text emojis that I could convert my words into. Or I don't know, happy, just like that. Or maybe even angry, just anything like that. And then it works, boom. This is my favorite emoji improvement here. If you have a sentence typed out and you select the little emoji icon down below on the keyboard, as you can see, it's going to find words that could be converted into emojis, and it's going to highlight them in basically orange. You can tap on it and select your emoji that you want that pertains to it, happy, sad, for example, or even other things like burritos. So it's just really cool being able to automatically do that, automatically emojify things. Now when you're in your control center and you toggle the toggles on, as you can see right here, they all have their own individual colors. This is from the Apple Watch, but it's a really nice touch on the iPhone. And also, the entire control center has been redesigned, as you can see. It's a new design, new white shade to it. Also, it's kind of floating in midair. And there's two pages. There's a music page for when you're playing music and a toggles page. And it's just redesigned and it looks much better. The ability to delete certain stock applications is a huge plus for many people. So any of these apps that you don't want to see on your home screen, you could hide them. So let's just say iBooks. I could select X and remove. Now it's still there uh, on the device. You just can't see it. And if you want to, you know, re-enable it, just open up the App Store and search for the application. In my case, it was just iBooks. And then you have the ability to essentially just download this application again. There you go. So I could just tap the little cloud and automatically, as you can see right there, it's available. And I could just go ahead and launch it and it's good to go. So there you go. The interface when you're inside the messages application and you're selecting a photo has been much improved. So you select the little photo icon here and as you can see it's a completely new interface. You essentially have a live camera viewfinder right here. You could actually take photos just by tapping like that and it puts it in the message ready for you to type something. You could also slide over just like this and you can see any of your previous photos here. You can just tap on those if you want to select those as well. So it just has this nice sliding interface. Of course if you want to take a photo you could just select camera, do that. If you want the full screen camera or you could go to your photo library if you want to do that. So just much improved interface here. You can also tap on the photos if you want to mark them up like this so you have that as well there's tons of improvements to the messages application for example lots of effects if you tap and hold on the send button here you have a bubble effect so you could have cool effects like that when someone else receives your message with the message bubble as you can see right here there's various to choose from and it appears just like that there's also full screen effects so if you tap and hold on the message and then you go ahead and select screen up at the top there's these effects like this balloons uh, confetti, just like that, you know, lasers, fireworks, really cool stuff. And again, it'll all appear on someone else's phone if they have iOS 10. Now, something else that's really cool is that some of these things are automatic. So, for example, if I type something like, I don't know, happy birthday, for instance, and I sent that, it's automatically going to go ahead and have the balloons filter happen, as you can see, just like that, without me having to do anything. So certain phrases activate things like that. You could also add a reaction to someone else's message. So let's say you wanted to give someone else's message that they sent you a thumbs up. You just tap and hold, and then you could go ahead and do thumbs up, thumbs down, ha ha, exclamation point, question mark, heart. I'll just do thumbs up, and then they will go ahead and see that just like that. So that's really cool. So other apps have that, and I'm glad that it's now in iOS by default. Also, the sketch feature from the Apple Watch has been added. If you select this little heart button here, so you could go ahead and send people sketches like this. You could also tap and hold on this little interface to send them a heartbeat effect. And pretty much all that stuff from the Apple Watch is now present on the iPhone. Apple opens up the App Store to third-party developers so they can make applications to go ahead and do things in the Messages app. But if you go to the App Store tab right now, you have a GIF section by default. And Apple didn't really talk about this. So you could just search for any kind of GIF. Uh, let's just do Happy Birthday. And then you'll get gifts. Obviously, that pertains to whatever you search for. So that's really cool that this is built in for it. You know, you usually have to get keyboards for it, but again, now it's stock, which is nice. And while we're in the Messages app, I'll just show you a few other improvements. If you tap on the little eye up here, you have a new interface for that. As you can see, it's redesigned just like this. You have some new icons up there. And also, this is really, really cool. 
you could send read receipts or not send read receipts for specific you know conversations normally it's just in the settings and it's just for everything but now again you could do it on a conversation by conversation basis with this toggle so that's really cool also the images and attachments inside a thread are now separated so you could you just go through and filter them just like that so this is pretty cool as well you could actually put little stickers on other people's photos for them to see it so if you go to the app store section over here again uh, of course there's the gift section but you if you slide over you actually get these little stickers and you know developers will be able to add more of these but essentially if you just tap and hold on one of these and you could drag it up and as you can see there it'll show up on the other person's photo so you can have little cool images stickers you could place there and again there's more coming to it but these are the ones that are here just by default so you got the little music note which can be fun and just one last thing for the messages application there's now rich links so if you go ahead and paste a link to anything and you send it ios will essentially analyze that link and create a little preview so if it's a youtube video it'll show you the title of the video give you a little preview of it and if it's an article it'll show you the title and maybe a little thumbnail for the website so it's just really cool just to give you a little bit of context as opposed to just a you know dry boring blue link the music app has been completely redesigned in ios 10. if you open it up you can see there it has this completely flat white looking design throughout the entire application the fonts are huge as well um, it's a little bit disproportionate but nonetheless it's there um, and again that clean white look transfers to everything including the now playing view just like this you see there that, that nice animation there. And also the lock screen and control center media controls have been redesigned as well. So on the lock screen you see there, it's very nice. Everything's spaced out just like that. You get that same cool animation. And also I did mention how there's the you know separate music page for control center. And it looks really nice when music is playing. So I'll show you here, as you can see, when you go to that page, you get all the information, album artwork, and it's just a lot of space for everything. And it looks really nice. The way that notifications look has completely changed. As you can see on the lock screen here, we receive a notification. It has a nice new white bubble effect to it. Of course, you could just slide over to the left, reply or clear it like this. Very new animation there. Or, of course, just slide this way and reply normally. Also, when you're in your device and you receive a notification, of course, the banner is redesigned as well. As you can see right there, of course, we could slide, reply, again, as we're normally used to, but it's completely redesigned. Also, the notification center has been redesigned as well. So if I show you here in the notification center, new look in there as well. Widgets are located in different places and they look completely different. They've been completely redesigned in iOS 10. Essentially on the home screen, you just slide over to your left spotlight view and you can access all of your widgets here. Um, they used to be in the notification center under the today tab, but now that's not there anymore. They're also present on the lock screen, which is very beautiful as well. So you could just take a slide over basically to the right and then you're gonna be seeing everything right there and it just looks absolutely great. The animations for when you launch applications have sped up. It's much faster and it's also just a different looking animation. Same thing goes for folders, a new blur when you open it. And again, there's a new animation when you open and close them as well. The contacts application and the phone application under the contacts section essentially have a redesign like this. You have these nice new blue buttons for call, mail, etc. And it just looks really nice. The categories tab inside the app store is back. There used to be an explore tab, but then they removed that and brought back categories. And a lot of people are going to like this. There's now ads for other applications in the app store. So when you search for something, before you see your real results down here, you're going to be seeing an advertisement for a certain application up here. The Maps application got a complete redesign. As you can see here, the controls are available down below at the bottom. It just looks very different in every regard. When you're inside a navigation at the Maps app, you can actually have it search for gas stations, fast food, coffee, just stuff like that nearby to make your trip easier. That's really neat. The search bar and messages is now relocated to the bottom. So because obviously these phone screens are getting larger, it's much more practical to have things relocated to the bottom of the screen. I don't know why this happened, but Apple really seemed to go all out with Spotlight this year. It's present inside, of course, the side swipe Spotlight view. It's present in the normal Spotlight view if you pull down from the home screen. It's also present inside the Notification Center and it's present on the lock screen inside the widgets view as well. So they really went all out. There's just so many places where you could access Spotlight Search. And I do like that. You could just search your phone from anywhere. And you could actually also access Spotlight Search within applications, which is actually just another place. Of course, again, I said it's a notification center, but also if you just swipe down gently at the top of the screen and then release, as you see there, it's going to pop you into Spotlight just like that. So that's a secret little gesture there just like that to access Spotlight within any application without having to fully pull down the notification center. There's no history in Spotlight search for when you search for something and actually tap on a result. As you see there, you're going to see the history listed there. In the camera application, Apple essentially moved the switch camera from front to back to the bottom of the screen from the top. And filters used to be down here, but they basically just swapped them. So this is much better because, you know, I'm using this much more frequently than filters. And especially with a plus-sized iPhone, I definitely appreciate this feature. So really welcome change. 
there's a new little filter option down below in the mail application that allows you to filter your emails by unread to read just like that and also if you have it toggled on and you go ahead and tap on this little section down here you could have uh, unread flagged to me cc me only mail with attachments and only from vip so that's some really cool filter options to make sure you're only looking at the mail that you want to look at for that specific time the news application has been redesigned as well there's a new icon for it and also the entire interface is kind of similar to the music application as all the font sizes are huge like ridiculously huge i don't understand that and it's much you know whiter cleaner you know that same kind of look that i discussed in the music app but now present in the news application i don't use news but if you do you're going to be seeing that redesign there's new dot indicators at the bottom of the new lock screen for the pages present on the lock screen. So as you see right there, of course, the first page is the primary page. The page over here is the uh, widgets page. And the other side is the camera application, just like that. So I made the wallpaper black just to make it a little bit easier to see that those are there. There's a new feature you can enable for certain contacts on your device called emergency bypass. Just go to the ringtone section when you're editing. Then you have this new toggle. And essentially what this does is it allows uh, you to receive audio notifications for a particular person, even if do not disturb is enabled on your device. So even if you're using do not disturb, you could have it for this person that you're going to be receiving a loud alert if it's something important or somebody important. In iOS 10, essentially, when you reboot your device, as you can see right there, if you do not have a passcode, it will just jump straight into the home screen like that. Of course, if you have a passcode and touch ID, you're going to have to enter that. But if not, you're not going to have to unlock. It'll just jump straight in. Inside the Apple Watch app, there's essentially a new section called Face Gallery. And this essentially allows you to create faces for your Apple Watch, you know, customize them right inside the iPhone interface as opposed to having to do it on your small watch screen. And ironically, even if you don't have an Apple Watch paired with the phone, it's still going to show this to you. Maybe it's just a marketing feature. Obviously, you can't really do anything with them, but it's still there. But either way, it's nice to be able to, you know, rearrange your watch, customize it without actually doing it on the watch just to make it easier because it's a little bit bigger screen, much bigger screen for that matter. There's a new keyboard click noise. It's more of a pop and less of a click. I actually prefer it. Just in case that demo wasn't enough for you, I'm going to go ahead and put it right up to the mic and do it. And there you go. The health app has been redesigned. If you open it up, as you can see, you have this brand new clean look to it. Everything's very refined looking. I just really like the way that they've changed the application. So definitely go check out the health app. In the settings for videos, there's essentially a new playback quality section where you could go to Wi-Fi or cellular and select best available or good, just to basically tailor it to your current internet connection. The breadcrumb functionality has improved with iOS 10, or some of you may know it as back to app functionality. So essentially when you get redirected from one app to another, the back button in the upper left hand corner no longer says back to the previous app, it just shows a little arrow. So you can still see your cellular data controls and your Wi-Fi indicator. So it just shortens that up so it's not such long of a sentence. And you could still, of course, get that back to app functionality. If you go ahead and put the messages application in landscape mode, you're going to automatically receive a handwriting prompt. So this is a new feature they demonstrated. So you just go ahead and scribble anything, draw something out. You get lots of cool fonts to choose from, stuff like that. Um, there's also filters, again, like congratulations, happy birthday, blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyways, once you're happy with your beautiful drawing, you select done, it automatically attaches it to a message and you can send it off just like that. iOS 10 will tell you the first time you open up an application if it hasn't been optimized for 64-bit devices. So essentially here, I'm going to go ahead and open up an old application. And as you can see, again, the first time you open up a app, it will tell you this application is not optimized for iOS 10. And it may affect overall system performance. You can just go ahead and select OK, and then it's never going to show up ever again. Some of you guys might know this, but I thought this was pretty cool. You could actually use the bubble effects, you know, in the messages application essentially for photos. So you could just go ahead and tap and hold the same way you normally are used to. And again, you could just use the same effects, for example, slam or anything like that for, you know, images. So now when anyone receives an image, it'll slam in using those same cool animations or whatever animation you selected. The Photos application has a new Memories tab, which is really neat. It essentially compiles slideshows based on specific locations you are in, as you can see right here, and it titles them just like that. If you tap inside, you could, of course, look at all the photos that are in here, but you could also play this little video, which is essentially a slideshow that it creates for you with the pictures in it. So it has nice font. You could actually have music added to it as well, and there's different, you know, music uh, and font selections. So essentially, there's things like gentle, chill, happy, uplifting, and essentially they have different musics and fonts to supposedly match the mood. But again, the point is it creates a cool slideshow, and you could just view them all in a group if you want to here. And again, you could scroll up and down through your different, you know, memories here. 
Now you're supposedly going to be able to select search up here and actually search for uh, objects. For example, dog, dinosaur, stuff like that. And it's going to use software to actually detect those things in your pictures and show them to you. And that's really cool. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get it to work right now, but supposedly that's going to be added in the future. So you have that to look forward to. But again, in terms of photos, memories is the main feature. So this one's actually really cool. If someone asks you to do something at a specific time, for example, remember to go to lunch tomorrow at 3 p.m., iOS will automatically uh, detect that and give you the option to create a calendar event. So as you can see right there up at the top, it says one event found, June 27th, which is tomorrow, 3 to 4 p.m. And I have the option to select to add if I do want to add that to my calendar. And it's all filled in by default. This is really, really cool. So it just automatically screens your messages for potential calendar events and suggests them to you. Inside the Photos application, once you have a photo opened, there's a new menu if you just slide down and it's going to provide you with some great information. For example, you can see the exact location where you took that particular photo and you're actually going to be presented with a map, you know, telling you where you took that photo. And if you scroll down more, you're going to be seeing related, you know, to subjects using memories, essentially telling you related photos to that. But again, the map, in my opinion, is the best thing. You could also access this just by selecting details at the top of the photo. Inside the music section of the settings app, there's a new option called optimized storage. And if you toggle this on, when your iPhone is low on space, it's going to automatically remove music from the iPhone that you haven't played in a long time. Also in the music settings, um, there's an automatic downloads toggle for Apple Music. So if you want music that you save with Apple Music to automatically be downloaded, you can go ahead and enable the toggle. In iOS 10, Apple granted us much more control over the keypad inside the phone app. Normally, you don't have much control over it. Essentially, all you could really do is just copy or just, you know, manually delete numbers like this. But now, you can actually tap in here. You could use the magnifying glass to scrub around, you know, actually type things in different areas, modify it to a higher degree. And, you know, again, it's just basically like any other text zone or text field in iOS. So that's much improved. Again, you could actually go in and move stuff around. The settings panel for Siri has been relocated to the primary page of settings. It's the same uh, options in here. It's just been relocated, and of course, it has its new little icon there. If you have a passcode on your device and your device is on the lock screen, you're going to be receiving that little locked icon in the status bar. And just in case you guys didn't know, this new wallpaper that I have right here is the new default wallpaper in iOS 10. So brand new stock wallpaper. And this next feature is pretty strange if you ask me, but if you open up a folder on your device and essentially tap and hold to go into wiggle mode here and you exit the folder, the other apps won't be wiggling. But if you go back in the folder, those apps will still be wiggling. So essentially, uh, wiggle mode now if you enable it in a folder, it's only going to work within that one folder. Uh, it's just kind of a bizarre feature to add, but I guess, you know, there you go. If you guys go into settings, general accessibility, there is a new magnifier option. And if you enable this, essentially, uh, when you triple press your home button, you're going to be getting this interface. It essentially opens up to the camera like this, and this basically serves as a magnifying glass. You could zoom really high into depth on something. As you, as, as you can see right there, it's actually pretty impressive how well it works. Um, you could really focus in just like that using this little dial. So it's basically a magnifying glass using your camera that is in your pocket all of the time. Now, of course, you can just zoom in using the normal camera app, but this one zooms into a very high degree, and that's its dedicated purpose. So I'm actually pretty impressed with that. And I'm not going to show you this next one. However, FaceTime calls, the you know speed that it takes to connect to one has you know greatly improved. So your FaceTime calls should connect much faster. Notifications are separated essentially into bubbles. So each notification will have its own little bubble just to make things look cleaner. In iOS 9, everything was a mess. It was all just clumped together. And again, this takes effect on, in both the notification center and on the lock screen. The clock app in iOS 10 essentially has a complete dark theme to it, as you can see right here. So uh, Apple didn't really explain this, but hopefully it's pointing towards maybe a dark mode in the future. That'd be awesome, you know, for the iOS as a whole. Um, but essentially it has this nice theme. Now there's also this little new section called bedtime down below at the bottom. And essentially what this allows you to do is it lets you schedule a certain time that you want to go to bed so you could wake up at your gold time. So... Essentially, it just will ask you what time you'd like to wake up. And then after that, it's going to ask you essentially what days of the week. I'm just going to do Monday and Tuesday. And then it's going to ask you how many hours of sleep you want. Let's just do eight hours. And then it's going to ask you when you'd like to have your reminder. So you can have it 50 minutes before you go to bed, 20 minutes before, 45 minutes before, or an hour before. I'll just stick with 15 minutes. And then you could choose the sound there. I'm just going to leave that as it is. And then it's pretty much configured. So this is a cool feature. Um, and, you know, if you have trouble getting to bed at the proper time, this is definitely something you should probably check out.
when you're removing an app on your device, whether it be an App Store app or a stock app, uh, as you can see there, the delete or remove button is essentially now red. That's a new change. And also, the cancel and delete slash remove buttons have been swapped. They used to be the other way, but now they're this way. And this is normally how it is, you know, in terms of having an option that does an action in iOS. It's usually on the right, so I guess that change does make sense. The power off screen when you tap and hold the lock button comes up much faster than it did before. Safari now allows unlimited tabs in iOS 10. I believe the limit was 36 before, but now you could literally create an unlimited amount of tabs. As you can see here, there's just no end. I could just keep going forever. Um, I, I, I don't know. Like I could never deal with this many tabs. Like I, If I have like three or four open, it starts to bother me. So this is certainly not going to work for me. But as you can see here... I could just keep doing this forever. Forever and ever and ever. And there you go. But using the feature that I showed you guys earlier, uh, oh, it's still, still catching up there. Okay. We could tap and hold and select close all tabs. Now they're all gone, or they should be all gone. Yeah, there you go. Markup, which is a feature that allows you to draw on your photos, is now present in the Messages application and the Photos application. So, as you can see here, I have a photo here, and we're just going to go ahead and open up the Edit view, and we're going to select the three dots over here, and then we have this new Markup button. And if we tap on this, we have different colors we could choose from down here, and essentially we could just circle certain things, you know, draw on it, do whatever we want, and we could just go ahead and save it just like this. Now, this is also present inside the uh, Messages application now as well, so I'll show you... Uh, let's say you wanted to send someone a message, so we're just going to go ahead and add an attachment. And let's just choose this one here. And then you could just tap on it, and then you have the ability to select markup. And then you could just go ahead and draw on it like this. And you could save it, and you could just go ahead and select done. And there you go, you could send it off just like that. You now have the ability to play videos in line in Safari here. So as you can see here, when I basically make it so it's not full screen, it's going to play in whichever you know, small window that it originated from. So this is very useful, so you could continue to browse whatever page you're on and, of course, maximize it when you want to, but it's not going to stop when you minimize it iOS 10 actually raises the capacity of your device. Even though it contains all these new features, it's more efficient in doing so, so you're probably going to be getting a little bit of storage back on your capacity. It'll probably just be less than a gigabyte, but I still think that's really neat. When you tap and hold on any link on your device, you essentially now have the option to share it. So you could just, you know, have the share sheet pop up and you could share it to any of these services. There is a new default app on iOS 10, and it's called Home. It essentially allows you to control any home accessories through this application. It's nice that that's now built into iOS. Of course, you can hide the application using the new you know, application removal method, but again, it does come with iOS. The widgets view in iOS 10 has not only been redesigned, but many stock applications now come with widgets pre-installed. So essentially, just scroll down to the bottom of the page here, select Edit, then you could scroll down here, and as you can see, we have tons and tons of you know new widgets. So some of the new ones include music and phone favorites. So for music, it's actually not working right now for whatever reason. I can't seem to get it to work. It's just blank. I mean, this is a beta, so it makes sense why it's not working. You know, that'll eventually be fixed. But the favorites for phone is currently working. And as you can see right there, I can have you know a phone favorite right there, straight from widgets that I could go straight to calling or you know whatever that widget was set to do. So that's pretty neat. And also, the functionality of the weather widget has improved as well. If you select Show More, you get an hourly preview you know for the next few hours which was not there before so that's really nice even though there's no more today tab inside the notification center it's not completely gone essentially if you're still inside of an application on your device and you pull down notification center you could still access your widgets from inside an app just by swiping over and there you go you're gonna have them here so it's just not really labeled but again once you're inside of an application you could slide over of course on the home screen you just go ahead and swipe over like this but again in apps you could still access it through the notification center just with a swipe to the right the game center app is no longer on the home screen so few people use it apple just decided to relocate it to the settings app and Again, tons and tons of people have complained about the Game Center app, so it's finally gone. Mail, contacts, and calendars have now been broken up inside the settings app. Usually the settings are just all clumped together for these three things, but now they have their own individual panels. You can change up the colors of your display in iOS 10. So if you go to settings, general, accessibility, display accommodations, and then color filters, and you toggle on color filters, essentially you have these preloaded filters that will change the way your display looks. As you can see right here, pretty much everything on the screen looks a little bit different. And then there's also some other ones. Let's just try blue and yellow filter. And I believe this is present to accommodate visual disabilities. Um, and it's just really nice. You, can, you know, even if you don't want to use it for that purpose, you could just use it to kind of change up the way your device looks. Obviously, you're probably going to get sick of it after a little while, but it's something to play with. There's also a grayscale that allows you to 
Uh, basically, just make your entire device black and white if you want to kick it old school. And then there is color tint. And this is kind of similar to night shift in a sense. It just lets you shift the colors of your entire display to any color. So as opposed to it being like a yellowish tint like night shift, you could pretty much use any color. Obviously, you're not going to want something bright because it's going to hurt your eyes. But uh, again, as you can see here with the hue slider in con conjunction with intensity, you could pretty much make your screen whatever color you want. So that's pretty neat. So let's just go ahead and turn this off now. The mail application for plus sized iPhone users received some improvements. So essentially when you open it up on the left side, you have the preview of emails. You could just tap on the, you know, any email and then it'll show up on the right side. That's not quite the case in iOS 9 and earlier. Essentially, it's just not quite as good. So when you open it up, as you can see right here, the previews are over here on the side. However, they're not full previews. You can't actually see you know, a preview of the content of the message. It's just the title being the person sending you the message and the subject. There's no actual preview of the content. And you know, that has been added in iOS 10 and that's definitely a welcome change. The camera app and the photos app both launch faster on iOS 10. And this is especially good for the camera app so you could capture those moments easier. But again, the photos app, it also applies to that as well. Apple Pay for Safari is now implemented into iOS. I can't show this to you right now. However, if you go into settings on your device and then open up Safari, you could essentially find a toggle called Check for Apple Pay. So there you go. Here's another cool feature of Maps in iOS 10. If your iPhone is connected to the Bluetooth in your car, when you leave your car, your iPhone will actually remember where your car is because it will remember when the iPhone disconnects from the car. So that's really cool. Uh, there'll be a pop-up inside here telling you, you know, where your car was. I can't demonstrate that, but that's a really cool feature. When you're taking a burst photo inside the camera application, so that's basically when you tap and hold here and it takes a bunch of photos, the little indicator there is much smaller than it was in iOS 9. Along with the fonts being bolder inside the music application and the news application, on the lock screen, the fonts are actually bolder as well. Um, essentially just the clock there, you know, the day, everything here is just, you know, much bolder, a little bit thicker, a little bit easier to look at. I'm personally a fan of it. I do like it. If you make a mistake when you're asking Siri something, it will now say, maybe you said, that it's going to give you a suggestion that you could select that just allows you to correct your Siri query. So it's nice to know that if you made a mistake when asking Siri something, it will you know, basically suggest you a corrected version of it so you could get your query correct. On the music section of Control Center, it's going to show you the last application that you listen to music from. In my case, it's the music app. And that was present in iOS 9, but it's much improved because it actually shows the icon of the app there. On iOS 9, I'll show you what it looked like before. It basically just told you the name of the application. As you can see right there, there was no icon. So that's just a nice touch that was added. Some songs inside the music application now have lyrics available for them. So just slide down on the now playing interface and you, you know, you'll be seeing the lyrics. Now, not every song has this. It's about 50 50 right now. Obviously, this is still being rolled out, but I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. You know, there's a decent amount of songs out there that already have lyrics. So just a really nice feature that they finally built that into the music app. This next feature is pretty small, but I think it's things like this that make iOS 10 so cool. Uh, when you're writing a sketch to someone and you're in full screen mode like this and you receive a message from the person that you're writing the sketch to, just watch up here and see what happens. As you see right there, it just pops up as a little bubble underneath there. It's just so cool, that little animation, and just the attention to detail here is very impressive. There's a new iOS 10 feature called Lookup, and this actually replaces the define, you know, function. It basically just selects any word and go over to the next page in the sheet here, and then you'll see Lookup, you know, in the place of define. This is basically just an improved define view. Of course, you, see, you still get the definition of the word. However, some other suggestions, for example, you know, websites, app store apps, iTunes will show up in here as well. So it's just kind of more of a deep search pertaining to that word. And I can't show you this right now because I don't have any home devices, but if you do have home devices set up with the home application, essentially there's going to be a new page in Control Center, a third page over here, that will basically allow you to control your home accessories right in Control Center. So that's going to be very useful for people who have home accessories. So when you're about to select a trip in the Apple Maps app, if you go to driving options down below at the bottom of the list of routes, there's essentially a new option to avoid tolls. So if you don't have to pay for tolls, you could just toggle that on and the Apple Maps will essentially help you avoid those. You could export any web page on iOS 10 into a PDF file and then do whatever you want with it. Just go to the share sheet down below at the bottom and then go over to print actually. And then as soon as the print views up, basically just pinch in to the uh, little preview down here and that's going to open it up in a pdf view here and as you can see you can select share up here and then you can do anything with it you could transport it to another app or you know you can do it any whatever you want now with this pdf using the share option in the news app in ios 10 under favorites you could actually now sort your favorites just tap on favorites up at the top then you're going to be getting this menu you could sort by name sort by most recent or sort by most visited when you're inside a message thread in the messages application, the contact view up at the top has changed. Here's what it looked like in iOS 9 over here, and here's the one in iOS 10. 
But in iOS 10, we'll actually include the contact photo if you have one set. So that's basically the main reason for the change. And if you guys go into the Siri settings, there's been some improvements for Russian, Italian, and Spanish speakers. So essentially, if you go into language and you set any one of those languages as your Siri language, you're now going to have the ability to use a female and male voice. In the past, some of these languages didn't have that, but now you have the option to do that for, again, those said languages. South Africa and Ireland have also been added under English in here as well. So some nice improvements to Siri in terms of language. And while we're on the topic of different languages, there's been some autocorrect improvements for Thai and Korean. So if, again, if you speak either of those languages, you know you're in luck. Here's a really neat feature. When you connect it to an unsecure Wi-Fi network, the settings application will actually tell you. It's going to say security recommendation when you're connected to it. So it's nice to let users know when they shouldn't be on a certain Wi-Fi network. And also, if you select the little I button, it'll give you a little bit of more knowledge into why it's saying that. So that's good as well. And this last feature is actually one of my favorite ones in iOS 10. If you go into an email that's part of one of those annoying mailing lists that are so hard to unsubscribe to, iOS 10 will just give you the, a simple button at the top of the mail app, as you can see right here, that allows you to unsubscribe. So it's really nice that they're converting a process that usually takes, you know, a bunch of work, just do a couple taps on your screen, and I really appreciate that. If you've made it this far... Thank you. I love you. You guys are what makes this channel great. Dedicated supporters. And, you know, people who are dedicated to watching a 30-minute video. So, I love you guys. So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to this channel for many more videos pertaining to iOS. Of course, iOS 10, jailbreaking, and so much more. Also, make sure to follow the channel on Twitter, like it on Facebook, and also make sure to follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to put all those links down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace!